Welcome to the Financial IT Podcast, where we explore the latest trends and innovations shaping the world of finance. I'm your host, Nadira Sabigva, and today we are joined by uh, Sarah Jane Martin, Director of ICA Global AR Practice at Quadian. Sarah Jane brings a wealth of expertise in global accounts or receivable and deep insight into the evolving B2B payments landscape. Let's get started and hear Sarah Jane's expert perspectives on how businesses can navigate this rapidly changing environment and stay competitive in the B2B payment space. Uh, welcome to our channel, Sarah Jane. Yes, hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, Sarah Jane, so we have like a couple of questions that uh, that's really interesting uh, for us and for our audience, uh, for our uh, financial uh, IT community. Uh, can you just like give us a, a brief introduction about yourself as a professional expert in the fintech and just like a couple of lines about about yourself? Sure, absolutely. Um, so as you said, I am uh, the global director of AR automation at Quadiant. Um, formerly, I was a practitioner myself, so spent about 25 years um, uh, working uh, in the credit to cash space, started originally as a collector, um, and then moved my way up through several large organizations. Um, and in my last role, I was a, a global director of order to cash uh, for a global marketing company. And throughout my career, implemented lots of different financial solutions. Um, around the credit to cash process, uh, one of them being Quadian Accounts Receivable. Um, and so they uh, they offered me a job um, to come and work for them. And I, I jumped at that opportunity. That's amazing. So and what are the biggest challenges businesses face today in managing B2B payments, especially in the cross border space? Yeah, so it's interesting because that landscape um, is really changing in a lot of different ways. Um, and I think the challenges that businesses are facing uh, is not really keeping up with the technology. So there's a, a couple of things that I, I can identify as being uh, challenges that we see today. Um, so one of them, uh, obviously, is that without the use of technology, um, the, the payment process can be fairly lengthy. And certainly in the U.S., I think less so in, in Europe um, and EMEA, but there's still a heavy reliance on paper checks, believe it or not. Um, so there's always kind of a, a, a delay in the time it takes for organizations to receive payments. Um, another challenge that we see quite often is that there's a lack of transparency or visibility into that payment process. Um, so a lot of organizations you know, will request payments from, from customers um, and then really have no insights as to, you know, when that payment is going to arrive or where it is in that process. Um, so that's definitely one of the challenges. And then, of course, there's always a risk of default uh, or fraud. Um, so those are some of the challenges that we have seen in the space uh, as it stands today. And especially with cross-border, that just even complicates things even further. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually, uh, I think, that great solutions that you are providing, uh, but also talking about the, the role of emerging technologies like blockchain, AI, and ML playing in transforming B2B payments, correct? Can you just like also comment on this part as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think what we're seeing is uh, more and more um, you know, B2B transactions, um, people want kind of a B2C experience, right? We're so used to that in our personal lives, being able to leverage technology to make payments easily for, for B2C or for, for our own purposes. And we're starting to see that that sort of demand exists now in the B2B space. Um, and we're definitely seeing, you know, the, the emergence of those types of technologies like AI, right? So, um, having the ability to initiate and process payment, you know, through machine learning, basically to understand, you know, which of our customers um, get prompted to pay at a certain, you know, point in time. Perhaps they get a, a gentle reminder and they don't pay until they get something a little bit more urgent. Um, and now with the use of AI and machine learning, we're really starting to understand our customers' um, sort of payer behaviors, if you will. Um, and start to leverage that technology to, to improve that process and, and time to payment. Um, we've also seen that obviously that helps with analyzing that data, right? Large data sets that previously 
you weren't able to have the insights or you would spend the time trying to look into that data and by the time you figured it all out it would be redundant at that point um, so now leveraging ai to analyze you know huge data sets and understand trends and risks and things like that um, is also you know a, a, a product of us starting to use sort of machine learning and, and ai so and in today's uh, fastly developing so financial ecosystem you know the currency exchange and settlement times uh, play a big role like uh, in terms of uh, quadrant what can you also tell about it how you are solving these issues mm -hmm. yeah so i think uh, you know especially when you start to look at cross border payments um which you know it's always been kind of a problem right because you'll set you'll sell to a customer in a different country issue an invoice in your company's currency and then they of course want to pay in their own currency and that that completely makes sense and the challenges that we've seen historically um, obviously there's always some variability in exchange rates um, which can oftentimes really impact the value um, of the payment you receive if that exchange rate changes from the time the invoice is issued to the time it's paid so there's always a, a risk there of loss um, just just due to an exchange rate problem you also see with cross-border payments that the settlement time can be extended, right? So a, a transaction from a U.S. bank to a U.S. bank can be done fairly quickly. But if you start looking at cross-border payments, that slows down significantly um, and can even be impacted by things like time zones, right? Which sounds unbelievable, but uh, a lot of times if you're, if you're sending a payment from one country to another, it's going to happen during the business hours of, of that country. And so you might see some delay there as well. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, just with tracking payments, it's very hard to do that across border. Um, kind of goes through several different financial mechanisms before it hits your bank and you can lose track of it very easily. Um, and it also makes it then difficult to predict what payments you should be expecting and when they would be coming in. Um, so you kind of lack that visibility in that area as well. Okay, that's yeah, pretty impressive. And what will be the future of B2B payments look like? Are there any like emerging trends of technologies that businesses can should be prepared for the next five, ten years, fifteen? Yeah, I mean, I th I think if things continue on the track that they're currently on, we're definitely going to see obviously that more B two C experience. I think you'll see um, it become easier to make payments. Um, I, I think we're going to see, and this is just my little prediction, but I think we're going to start to see that AI develop in that area where a, a, a company will have a, obviously their ERP system issuing the invoices and it'll go directly to um, to their customer and then the, that system will pick that up and, and all of the back and forth about the invoice, and whether it's valid, any dispute resolution, that kind of thing, I think is all going to be done electronically. Um, I think that there's going to be a way for that to just sort of happen through the through technology and it won't necessarily involve um, a human having to look at an invoice or process a payment. I think we're definitely going to see some changes in, in that environment. Um, and then just, you know, outside of that, which sounds sort of really futuristic, but I just think we'll, we'll start to see the, the, the ease of moving money around between different countries and between organizations um, speed up, probably be much easier. You might see things, you know, just click a button on your phone um, to make the payment, et cetera. So I think we're going to really see it kind of catch up because currently the B2B space is still a little bit sort of antiquated. Um, and that's where I think we're going to see some real changes and improvements. So uh, regarding this, as you mentioned, that it's like antiquated, uh, what, what do you, for, do you foresee traditional financial institutions losing ground to fintechs in the B2B payment space? Or will there be more collaboration between the two, like a new and old, I can say? Yeah, so I, I don't think they'll be necessarily losing ground. I think we'll see more collaboration. Um, the reason for that is, you know, as I've said, like the traditional banking system is fairly antiquated. Um, so they are probably looking to try and improve that experience by using and leveraging fintech. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a lack of confidence from your average sort of consumer or organization um, in moving away from a traditional banking relationship. So I think we're going to see a lot more collaboration, a lot more streamlining between the two to try and enhance the overall process, still kind of giving the consumers the trust that they currently have in the financial institutions that they've been with for hundreds of years, um, but then improved with the 
uh, with the application of a financial technology. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I also think that yeah, collaboration much more interesting. <laughs> so rather than just uh, you know not to collaborate. So the in, and the next question next question is we are seeing a, a rise in embedded finance as well. How do you think embedded payment services into platforms is uh, changing the B2B payments landscape? So I think that's kind of the first step in moving to a more B2C experience. Um, so I think that's why, why it's becoming more and more critical. Um, you know, some of the webinars that I've done, we've talked about how providing an easy payment option for your customers actually really improves the chance that your customers will pay early or on time. Um, so I think a lot of businesses are kind of seeing that it's a fundamental need that they need to have some sort of payment experience embedded into, into their systems. Um, I think that, you know, it will we'll start to move away from some of those like paper checks and things like that. So of course, then that, that we need to offer an alternative, right? Um, if you want people to stop sending a check in the mail, you've got to give them a convenient way for them to, to move into that space. Um, and then, you know, you just see things like PayPal and Stripe in, in the B2C space, I think you'll start to see much more of that in the in the B2B space as well. Yeah, you, you are just uh, totally right. Uh, and the next thing is like really interesting as well. And what kind of in infrastructure changes are necessary to support the evolution of uh, B2B payments? There's a lot of folks now that are in sort of the role of a digital digital transformation officer or whatever the title might be. Um, where they're really tasked with looking at the overall business um, process, right, and finding ways that they can, uh, you know, transform. Um, so I think the first thing that, you know, businesses need to do is have the ability to kind of look at their overarching process and see where there's opportunity um, to, to do that transformation. Um, and I think obviously, again, with the AI, right, it's like the hot topic, but people are really looking at ways to leverage AI in that infrastructure um, in order to to um, to get to that goal and talking about your uh, customer base with quad and global footprint how do you support businesses in navigating the complexities of cross-border payments and regulatory challenges as well yeah absolutely so we are a global company so obviously one of the things that we need to be aware of is uh, you know obviously local laws um, you know, there's a, a push now, uh, particularly in Europe, but across the globe for this e-invoicing requirement. Um, so the first thing we need to do there is make sure that we're up to date on that and that we can offer that to our customers, um, that we really understand those laws. We also uh, now are growing a lot of our US-based businesses also have business in other countries. So we like to be able to offer different um, solutions for that. So we partner with many different merchant service providers. Um, who can offer cross-border payment or settlement in different currencies. Um, so we really try and get ahead of that problem so that our customer's customer has all of the options they need in order to pay their invoices quickly and conveniently. And also a uh, really important question, what distinguishes Quadian solutions in the B2B payment space compared to other fintech companies? What is the unique value proposition that you bring to businesses? Yeah, um, so I think one of the things that, that we offer um, is flexibility in selecting a merchant service provider. As I mentioned, we have uh, many partners. Um, so first thing we'll do when we talk to a customer and we're implementing with them is find out what their requirements are um, in terms of what their customer base is, you know, where are they located, what type of you know, payment forms are they willing to accept, and we'll find the right provider for our customer. Um, and they can change that at any time. So if their business changes or their needs change, they can select a different provider or even an additional one, right? So some of our customers will have a large US customer base. We can use a domestic provider for that, but then for their international customers, they might need a different provider. So we have the ability to select whatever solution is best for our customer um, and they're not locked into anything. So if they, like I said, if they need to change or they, uh, things, you know, they grow globally or something and they need a different option, um, we can provide those options. And I think that kind of sets us apart from some of our competitors. Okay. So, and also one of my uh, personal questions, how do you come to this payments and fintech business? And how is it like being a, like a female business professional and being so spectacular and making great uh, movements in this industry? Can you just like share your thoughts on it as well? 
how so how I came into the industry and then what it's like. <laughs> um, so it's interesting because I never thought I would end up here, right? <laughs> Um, so having been in the industry for so long, um, I, I solutioned a lot of the problems that I now talk to customers about. So I onboarded a, a credit card provider. I, you know, worked for a global company where we had all of these challenges, right? So I kind of came with that knowledge already. And then when I implemented the Quadrant AR solution, I was really impressed by, by what it could do. Um, obviously so much so that then when they said, Hey, you know, you should come work for us. I was like, absolutely. Like. The thing that I like the most about what I do is I love helping our customers solve those same challenges that I experience, right? I, I totally understand where they're coming from. Um, I think that really helps too. I think it makes me more of a trusted advisor to our customers as opposed to just kind of like a hard sell where I'm not, I'm not in sales. So I can really give them the, my honest opinion about, you know, what things we can help them fix and what, you know, best practices are. And I think, you know, it's, it's, no different for me than it would be if it, if I were a man, I don't think. I mean, I, I, I feel like Quadrant supports uh, quality across the board, so I don't really have any challenges being, um, you know, being a female in this role. <laughs> Although people are always like, what's a solutions engineer? <laughs> I think they think I'm building bridges or something. <laughs> exactly. And the last question is, how do you balance your work and uh, so uh, your personal, I would say, uh, space because I know that I'm also coming from the fintech and payments industry and I know it's like super stressful and how do you balancing it like this is also really important yeah so I would say I do a pretty good job of that most of the time um, I'm, lu I'm lucky enough that I work remotely from home um, so I am very disciplined about treat, treating my home space like I would if I were going into an office. So I get up every day, I get dressed, I come into my office, I close the door. Um, when I'm in my office, I'm working. And then when I'm done working, right, when five o'clock or whatever time rolls around, I shut my computer down, close the door, and I don't come back in until, the, you know, the next day, just like if I were at an office. Um, so I think that really helps kind of with that, keeping my work and my personal life separate, even in my own home. Um, initially when I worked from home, I used to sort of like take my laptop out into the living room and like be, you know, replying to emails at nine o'clock at night. And then I was like, no, you know, you need to really make sure that you do have time away from work. Um, for the most part, I'm pretty good at that. Some days if it gets super busy, then I, I might break my own rules, but generally I'm pretty organized. So I keep things, um, you know, on a calendar. I'm pretty strict about, you know, blocking time off for lunch or something like that, right. To make sure that I do get that that break from work every day. So it's a delicate balance, um, but generally I feel like I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> and do you also use an uh, AI assistance all the time, like reminders, et cetera? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, even within our solution, we have we have multiple AI functions and then also just in my personal life too, like um, I was surprised actually, I, I went down the chat GBT rabbit hole and I was amazed at the information you can pull in in a matter of seconds. So yeah, it's exciting. It also really uh, interesting question as well. So regarding uh, AI, don't you think that is it like a, a next uh, movement of like, you know, NFTs and other, uh, so, you know, in, in the old uh, uh, past time, there were like lots of uh, movements like NFT came, and also another product came, but then it disappeared. And you think that uh, AI embedded finance and uh, AI embedded products will just like life live long, longer, or is just like a trend? Because everyone is now investing into AI. Everyone is trying to show uh, AI embedded uh, apps, etc. I think it is here to stay. Um, I don't think a lot of people fear AI, right? They think it's going to take all the jobs and you know the world will be run by robots. Um, I, I don't subscribe to that, actually. I think that, that we'll leverage it in the ways that it can really help us. But at the end of the day, I think there's always going to be a need for human input, um, especially in finance, right? We could, I don't think any company would rely on AI to, you know, complete their audit as an example, right? We would have to always, because there's just that lack of um, sort of contextual understanding. Um, so I don't think, I don't think it'll go away, but I don't think it's, I also don't think it's going to kind of have a global takeover. I think it's it's going to be refined and improved and we're going to find the right places um, to use it. But I think we'll always still have that human component that will be necessary, um, certainly in the finance sector. 
Um, so I think I think we'll see that. Yeah. Okay. So and based on my own experience, I know that Quadiant is a global technology company that provides solutions for automating and optimizing customer communication and financial processes. And uh, you know the project focused on helping businesses, enhancing customer engagement. And to be honest, Anna, I am one of your fans, and and I really hope. And uh, I'm gonna just like uh, watch. Uh, so you are improvements, anyways. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, so yeah. I mean, th so thanks for your time uh, with financial IT, Nadira Sadikova. And uh, today uh, we got a perfect opportunity to speak with. Sarah Jane Martin, director of ICA Global AR practice at Quadiant. And uh, yeah, so it was lovely speaking to you. Nice to speak to you too. Thanks for having me.